it's weird how little things can bother you. And something happened a couple of days ago that's still bothering all of us here in the man cave. So, you know, I, I we put a lot of pressure on Fritzy to get a guest. And, and, you know, the time that, you know, I give him, it could be short notice. There are times that we come in in the morning, I'll say, hey, can you reach out to such and such? Sometimes you get that person. Sometimes you don't. Depends on the, you know, the sport or the, the player or manager, coach, the, the writer, reporter. And, uh, you know, there are other times when we set something up in advance, a week in advance that we're going to know. We knew Sandler was going to join us. Uh, that's been at least a week in advance. Uh, when we reach out to Shaq, you know, some of these other, uh, you know, guys who are personalities who are being pulled in a lot of different directions, you know, you have to put in your time and, you know, you know see if you can get a reservation there. So prior to game one of the NBA finals, prior to the tip off, I sent a text to Fritzy, and I, I'm not going to mention the name of the person, but, you know, this is a high end person. And I was trying to get this person on the show for the following day. And I said to Fritzy, hey, reach out to and, you know, see if this person wants to join us the following morning. And then it, you know, this is this is common in our business. And the response that we got back was, Todd. Are you are you crazy? It's twelve hours notice. The game is about to tip off, and this is a this is you're going to make this request now. Yeah, that's basically paraphrasing by, but almost exactly that's what it was. Uh, yeah, and it's just like we keep bringing it up, like we're kind of joking about it, but it really it 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 bummed us out a little bit here. You know, and look, we, I pride ourselves in that we go for the right people, and hopefully we're professional when we do it. But when somebody says. Are you crazy? So this person has a spokesperson who says, are you crazy? You know, 12 hours uh, no, uh, notice here? Yeah, see. The, what the person said was, in 12 hours, question mark? That seems a bit crazy to ask with no notice right as the game is tipping off. Yeah. Just as the game's tipping off? Yeah. I, that this person wasn't playing in the game, just to clarify. He was a, he's a, <laughs> they were watching at home. I, I had a better chance of getting somebody who was playing in the game <laughs> than somebody who was watching the game. Oh. And then and then Paulie goes, and I, 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 I laughed because I didn't think Todd would do it. For, uh, Paulie goes, hey, Todd, why don't you reach out and uh, ask him if he wants to join us again tomorrow? And then Paulie says, I'll buy you lunch if you do it. <laughs> That, and, that perked me up right away. Yeah, and, and Todd did it. What's the worst <laughs> they could do? They're going to beat me up through the uh, through the laptop through, the, through my oh, phone. Oh my gosh! It's like a, it's a sports person. It's yeah. somebody who does this for a living, and, and they're good at it. Mm -hmm. And the idea that uh, they'd be like, "Whoa, what? Do what, you in twelve think, hours with you, no notice? Do you think this person got the message? Absolutely not. I think that this person should be aware that this message is being sent out on their behalf. Yeah. Um, because it's embarrassing. Yeah, this person has been friendly to the show in the past. Yeah, I don't, I don't, don't give any hints yeah. here. It's just it's somebody who I, I wanted to have on. I was surprised that that was the reaction that we got there because it made it seem like we were being unprofessional. And look, you know, there, sometimes we're not as sensitive as we should be to a, you know the time period and when you're trying to turn it around and get somebody on. But I, we've we've woken people up before. <laughs> But this, in this case, I thought that would be ample time. It's right before the game starts. It's tomorrow morning. That should be enough time. That was the problem. It was right before <laughs> the game was starting. It depends how you say it. Yes, Eden. A long time ago at uh, when we were back at the mothership and I was working for a game night, if you remember that, like the nighttime show, yeah. Malice at the Palace just happened. Yeah. And I was relatively newish at ESPN and uh, – a uh, former producer of this show actually was like, call uh, Chuck Daly. We want him on the phone. It's like, all right, no problem. So it's like, I don't know, 1130 at night, 12 o'clock at night. I call Chuck Daly, who tears into me. And he's just like, are you kidding? He's like, you woke me up for this. He's like, I don't even know what. He's just like, well, I'm in bed. What do you do? And he laid into me. He's just like, all right, fine. Five minutes. Chuck Daly was able to do that. <laughs> Malice at the palace out of bed. The, as it's happening. Like, whoa, we need to react to it. Who do we get? But... This dude needs 12 hours notice as yeah. the game's tipping off. Yeah, Paul. I had one similar booking. It was um, about a month after 9-11, and so it was a very serious time in New York, obviously, and Dick Shap, the great sportscaster, had passed away, and we were doing a tribute show to Dick Shap and scrambling to get it together, and Bob Lee was hosting it. I got tasked to help out for some reason, and 
I called uh, the right-hand person with uh, Mayor Giuliani, who was basically spending his time going to meetings and funerals for the next month. And we told, we informed Mayor Giuliani, I informed him through his right-hand person, right there, and said Dick Schaap passed away. And I could hear Mayor Giuliani in the background, oh, no, that's that's terrible, that's terrible. And then I, said, and then I felt even worse knowing his schedule. But I was, Bob Lee said, call him. And uh, we told him we're doing a show in an hour to attribute to him. And Mayor Giuliani goes, yes, I'll absolutely call into the show. And the same day, we did that with Bob Knight for Dick Schaap. And Bob Knight had his first game at Texas Tech that night. Yeah. And he ended up doing it. But there's sometimes when you're calling for booking, I don't do it any time as much as Fritzy, but you're like, oh, my gosh, what's going to happen here? Yes, Tony. So the bottom line is there's a thousand ways to respond to those things. And even if you think the person asking is asking on very short notice and is being insensitive to their schedules or whatever, there's just so many other ways you can handle it. We've all seen responses. I've shared many of them with you guys. You know, Thank you for your interest in our client. I don't think we can turn this around that quickly. There's just a million words and phrases you can use other than, are you crazy? The game's about to start. you got to give me – we've had bigger celebrities <laughs> that we've approached since we're not naming names get back to us. A, more quickly, and B, say it in a, a manner like that. It's just, I, don't, I just don't think we're going to be able to uh, turn this around that quickly, but thanks for interest in our client. That's it. Why would Rachel Nichols do that? Oh, no. Us? No, I'm joking. That wasn't us. It was not. It was not Rachel. Uh, yeah, it was just, and, and it, it bothered me. Sometimes when the, the rejection we'll get when Todd will reach out to somebody, I don't like reading those notes. And I hesitated to send it to you because Paulie, and rightfully so, and even Seton, they'll give me, they've given me dirty looks over the years and they'll take me over to the side. Why would you share that? Why yeah. would you say that? You, you just put him in a mood now and now he can't concentrate on the show. Yeah. And you, you really didn't need to share that with him right before or during the show. And I've been guilty of I that. know, but you want to show me that you reached out to somebody just in case I don't believe you for That's some reason. not that you don't believe me, but just, I guess, just to see what they're oh. just to share the response, Painful. but I can do better at that to this day. Maybe that was one I should have kept. Under yeah, my you hat. absolutely should not have <laughs> shared that with me. <laughs> there you go. Because I wanted to reach out personally to this person to say, do you know that this is what's being presented to us on your behalf? And and he might say, hey, you know what? Uh, I need more advance notice. Okay. What's the worst blow off you guys ever gotten? The reason I asked that is we were at the, I had the privilege and we've all, I think, been there once to the Playboy Mansion. I was helping produce or get guests at least corral them at, for an ESPN radio show at the Playboy Mansion. And I went over to an analyst. I'm not going to say who it is, obviously. And I went over and said, you think you have five minutes to come over to the <laughs> table over there? And the look I got in the comment was, do you see what's going on around here? You see what we're looking at here? I'm going to do an interview now of the millions of things I could possibly be staring at or hang or people I could hang out with. And I'm to sit and do this interview now in the middle of the Playboy Mansion at the Grotto? Yes, boy. A bunch of years ago, I think I just started working with you, we were at Miller Park for the All-Star Game, and you and Sean Salisbury introduced me to Reggie Jackson. And Reggie Jackson's got a reputation of being different. It could be difficult, it could be great. He was super cool. He was sitting there with me, I knew nobody, and Reggie Jackson was super cool to me. Uh, it was nice to everybody, you guys, and with talking, he, he like... Uh, you guys were ordering Sundays. He's like, hey, kid, you want a Sunday? I'm like, yeah, Reggie Jackson, of course. Two weeks later, we're doing the show at a golf course. I'm producing with you and Sean Salisbury and Rob Dibble. Reggie Jackson's in the in the field at this charity golf event. Reggie Jackson comes walking by like uh, after his round. I go, Reggie, it's Paul. We met the day before. <laughs> <laughs> Just a breeze. He didn't break stride. He didn't make eye contact. If, if I would have stood in front of him, he would have walked over the top of my corpse. And, and I was like, man, like, me and Reggie are tight, Mr. October. Yeah, see. Nope. It's not the worst blow off I ever got, but it's my favorite one. I was working, uh, doing interviews on a red carpet in a lo like a local casino opened. And they had this like huge party with all of these A-listers. And uh, I'm interviewing all these people. And Bill Murray goes walking by. And I was like, excuse me, Bill, Bill, can I get a second? And he looked at me and said, you just did. And then kept walking. Oh. And I was like, bang, that's mm. money tape right there. Mm. I got great sound. Yeah. Yes, Todd. We had Reggie Jackson booked. I'm pretty sure I was working with Paulie and Seaton at the time. This was yeah. several years ago at ESPN Radio. And I called him at the time he agreed to. And it's like, Todd, I'm having lunch. <laughs> I was like, okay, because we were supposed to have you on at 11 o'clock and the show's over at noon. Whatever the time was. And it's like, we're off the air in about 45 minutes. Call me back. I'm having lunch. So I called him back in a half hour, which is the last segment. It's the latest I could possibly call him and still salvage his interview that he agreed to. I'm like, Todd, I'm still eating. Here's what he's saying to me. Well, there, there was <laughs> what a... What am I supposed to do with that? Remember the Hall of Famer who would... Oh, this, oh this is I got golf? <laughs> Are we doing this right now? You said 8 o'clock. It's 8.02. I got golf. I know. And then, like, there was a time when we called him. He was using the bathroom. <laughs> and and he... 
<laughs> you're just going to, I, 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 I don't need to do this. Yes. Yeah, the best part of it too, was that he's given Todd all this grief, right? And just making Todd jump through all of these hoops to get oh. this like Todd 801, like just like he said, right? And then finally get him on the phone and put him through it. Dan, my pleasure. Oh, oh. oh. what do you mean oh. your pleasure? I know he would go. We got to be out at 10 past the hour. I got golf. <laughs> I'll tell him. I know. I know you're thanks. Right? My pleasure, Dan. Yeah. This is like a weekly sponsored thing though you're doing. Why, why, why are you rushing us? This yeah. is, you have to do this. I, I know. Think. I know. Oh, that was so painful. Because I Todd would go in and just take arrows. He was Custer. And then all of a sudden, this uh, person would come on and be, Dan, anytime. <laughs> eight o'clock eight o'clock. You gotta, what, what clock are you on? You know, you have trouble with the time zones? What? What are you being like? I called Harry Carey once blindly because the Cubs were playing the Dodgers. I was working at an L.A. station. And Harry Carey goes, call me back. I'm having breakfast. So I call him back, like exactly what he told me to call him back. He's like, are you the guy that was supposed to call me? Yeah, you told me to call you back now. I'm calling you back. The hell with you. And he hung up on me. What a great He's working with Jim Lampley and he's promoting it. We got Harry Carey before the Cub Dodgers. And I'm like, we don't have him anymore. The hell with you. Uh, We'll take a break. (laughs) That's the only time I ever spoke to Harry Carey. Call me back. What the hell with you? You were supposed to call me? I'm calling you back like you said. Uh, 